I'm Dr. Flux and today we're going to talk about the Vortex Nitron. In all of its glory. Hello Nerf world, I'm Dr. Flux and today we're going to look at the Vortex Nitron. This is a very cool blaster. Uh, Vortex is actually first released in 2011, so a little bit dated. Uh, many people thought it was going to be joining the forgotten Nerf uh, Halls of Fame, uh, but they finally came out with, with a release in 2018, so kind of recent. Um, however, I'm going to go over a few things, pros, cons, uh, about the, the Vortex line. And uh, part of this too is uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of Vortex. I love the way it, it looks. I love how it performs. It's weird. So I don't know about performance, but it does have some, some benefits. That is a long rev. Um, so let's get right into it. First off, uh, this is a design that was kind of first done by... I am Bobo Lolo, and he went in and he uh, did an upgrade on one of these. Uh, he then later did an upgrade where he put in a, I think it was a 2S, and he did some comparison, and then he did a 4S, did some comparison. He was making the video for people who wanted to do a 3S modification, which uh, that's what I was about, because I, I like taking it to 3S. And he, uh, I think he put that video out about several years ago, it's, it's a bit dated. I'll put it, I'll put it in the description. Um, but yeah, so basically I just went in and I, I pulled out all the electronics. I did leave the stock motor uh, because it seems beefy enough. I didn't see a need to change that out. Um, I did take out the original switches and all the wiring and um, I put in two uh, pretty large, the larger micro switches, which this was a very tight fit. It was uh, kind of hard to get in there and do that. So I ended up having to cut the mag release. So the mag release is actually uh, no longer ambidextrous, so it can only go from this side. Unfortunately, I lost that functionality because I had to put a screw in to hold the assembly in because I, I essentially removed a bunch of plastic here to fit that micro switch in for the trigger. Um, a little bit about the this, uh, this blaster is this is the only flywheel type system for Vortex, and that's kind of why I'm drawn to it. It's why I love this thing. I wish there was more of them. Very interesting and unique design here. They use one flywheel instead of two. Nowadays, with all the rival and all the you know strife type builds, we, we're accustomed to seeing two you know flywheel motors. That uh, uh, but this one is just one, and I believe this is kind of this theory. Uh, there are frisbees, and you throw a frisbee with one hand. You don't really throw it with two. So you just need that force on one side. And the other side is actually a spinning wheel that applies a little pressure to it to give it a spin. So that's how they fly so well. Um, these are, it is, so let's talk about the ammo. They are uh, a little bit weird on their flight patterns. They kind of, kind of hover through the air, kind of like a little UFO, just, uh, or a frisbee. They're not as fast as darts or rival. Um, they, I, my, chrono, my chronograph is too small. I have the one with the, the smaller hole and I cannot shoot Vortex through it. But uh, from digging around online, it looks like it's around 50 FPS. They're not too terribly fast, uh, which is also why they're kind of unique because uh, when you're on the battlefield with these and trying to get tags and stuff, people are kind of pretty used to getting, getting shot at with darts and, and rival and, and various stuff. These are kind of weird. People aren't used to getting shot at by these, so sometimes it's hard to gauge the trajectory of it and the flight path. So the way I think about it, this stuff is almost like, it's almost like a flamethrower, the way it performs. Because it indoors, when you fire this, it kind of bounces off the walls, and it's almost like rival in that sense, that um, it, it, if you're hiding in a room and someone comes in and just shoots aside, it's going everywhere. So I kind of think of it like a flamethrower. Um, that leads us to the ammo, and obviously this thing can go through ammo pretty quick. Uh, and so, if you try to buy the Nerf ammo right now, it came, like I said, it came out in 2018, they re-released. 
and they did come out with uh, some ammo packs and whatnot. I did see it on Amazon. However, it is like 50 cents a round, which that is a lot of money for a for a uh, ammo. I think, uh, yeah, it's probably about the most expensive, other than missiles. You know, if you try to get some of the missile packs, but yeah, just your standard ballistic, you know, dart, ball, disc. This is the most expensive. Uh, so that leads us to, I did a little research and found a company. Um, on here it says HS. I, at first I thought it was Headshot, but no, it's not. Uh, Headshot does not make discs. Um, it's a company called Haosen Toys. Haosen Toys. And uh, there's various sellers on Amazon that sell this stuff. It's all going to be the same stuff I've noticed. It's, it has the H and the S on it. Uh, they usually run about, you can get a pack of 100 or so for around $22, $23. So you're looking a little less than a quarter around. Still better than the Nerf stuff, but uh, in comparison, I had a few issues with this, especially if you stagger. So if you use regular, you then you use a Nerf one and a regular. I found that what happens is on this this stuff, well the knockoff, the head of it or the top of it kind of pokes up a little bit, and the Nerf round has a nice crisp uh, hole in there, so it actually almost acts like a Lego where it actually will snap in. And so as you can see, I can't slide it. So when it's in a magazine, the pusher is basically trying to push it and it can't because it's got a lip. And so it creates a jam. And you'll hear that sometimes. Um, that's what's happening. It's, it's when I, if I ever mix up the two ammo types and that occurs, it, it creates a jam. So it is something to consider, you know, if, so if you're going to run this uh, cheap stuff, make sure you're just running nothing but that, which is kind of frustrating, especially if you have a collection of the old Nerf Vortex. Um, I just recommend that you run one or the other. So it is what it is. Um, and I actually fired off like, I must have fired off around 500, almost a thousand rounds. Uh, uh, well, these just over and over like a thousand times. And I kept having issues and kept and I and I noticed that when you first buy this it's a little frayed on the edges over time that all wore off so that's cool so it, now they're nice and smooth but they they weren't smooth when I got them they were kind of they had these little frays and I just noticed they started firing better and better the more I shot it so something to consider um, and moving on so just like the ammo which is a little bit expensive and hard to get unless you go this route and it's not too bad uh, magazines are kind of difficult so this fortunately I, I got it at Goodwill I got another I found another one um, but getting magazines is a problem so I did find a I found this on Thingiverse this print here is done by uh, someone by the name of Buff Daddy Nerf and he created a uh, just a magazine that utilizes um, a PVC plug with uh, light, this is a fluorescent light tube cover and the 3D printed part and then of course the heart of it is unfortunately for this guy a uh, reactor spring. So hopefully I can use these parts in a different project because um, now it is no longer a reactor because I've taken the heart of it. So I do like how the reactor looks and I maybe can utilize it in a future project somehow. The tube's pretty cool. We'll see. We'll see what happens there. But yeah, I mean, I did. I thrifted that the other day, so uh, I was able to actually build this out and you know give it some tests. So pretty happy about that. I do like how this thing works. Um, on the on the Thingiverse, it says that they hold about 30 rounds. I have noticed this one that I built for some reason holds 34. So it is a pretty strong spring, and I, I can squeeze 34 and then they fire pretty consistently so that that is awesome um so yeah that's uh pretty much it for the mags i'm gonna look at probably making about five six more of these and figure out some kind of loadout um i would love to run this in hvz i i like i like the low velocity and the strange curvature of the disc i think they're great for hvz they don't hit really hard uh, people aren't going to complain you know if they get hit by this because it doesn't hurt and they're fun and it's funny to see these things fly into the air and it is kind of crazy to see a barrage of discs so that's what I looked forward to doing um, one last thing is mine that I thrifted did not come with a scope 
So I did find another thing of first file. This is uh, by someone that goes by MPOW. Um, probably not saying that right, but uh, if you go on there and you look for a uh, look for a Nitron scope, you should see this thing pop up. This is it. It's a work in progress. Uh, I actually have some plumber's putty on here drying that I'm going to sand off, and then I got some of the other parts, and I still need to print in, uh, the cover, the shrouding, which um, these things actually set on. And I'm going to try to match it to the original Nitron. Obviously, um, it'll match this paint scheme where I use the the vinyl black, so the vinyl dye black. Let's go ahead and do some firing demonstrations of this and see what kind of uh, fire rate we got on it. So I'll see you in a second. All right, let's try it out. So that's 34 rounds. That jamming you hear is basically what I was talking about, how this guider is uh, hitting the ridges. So I'm going to reprint that, maybe file it down some more, and that should be fine. But yeah, there you go. Awesome solution. Now I just need to find some more reactors so they can donate their precious springs. Until next time, this is Dr. Flux. Happy nerfing.